this is AJ the CEO coming at you with another video and in this video like I promised on my church post production I'm sitting down with my brother-in-law Glenn Thomas and the reason I'm bringing them in is after all the stuff I talk about helping media ministries their church was the very first one that I did after my home church um, and I'll link the video up on my um, media tour that I did of my church but based off of what they saw I literally came in and did their church the exact same way. And the reason I'm bringing them in so that, yes, it's family, but I want you to just hear from him in the standpoint of, and I'll link some of the videos of what they're doing at their church um, as well, because they're embracing um, the e-missionary and realizing how, much, how important video is. But kind of want to talk to him um, and kind of share like, what his thoughts are and what how he's seen the change because they've had this in place since 2015 right yes yeah, so 2015 all right so just kind of like what they've seen in the change before and after and kind of where you're going with that as well too so what were y'all doing before um what was the whole genesis of wanting to start doing video and stuff like that i think the whole genesis I, when i came to the church um they had like one camera and they wanted to get you know they seen it in other churches and we went through a lot of different churches and we saw them videoing you know and that was something that was new at the time i've been at a previous ministry where we video but you know it was back in the day of uh old youtube but we had the the, the recorder hooked up to the vcr or the recorder hooked up to the dvd record the video recorder uh, you know, so when I came here uh, and, you know, we talked about streaming and a lot of people gave us a lot of different prices and different things. And so uh, we got into it and our pastor was kind of innovative and like, OK, let's do it. Let's get it done. And so y'all came in, you came in and we hooked it up and we got it done. And, and we had teaching. We started teaching people in our church to how to do video ministry. We were already doing TV stuff, but we never got into the streaming aspect of it. Never got into the lower thirds and different things. We were still burning DVDs and CDs and. And which is fine for that day and age because we have a church who's not just young people. We have a church who is a, uh, we have a diverse age group in our church. So some, some of the saints still do DVDs and some of the saints still do CDs. So we wanted to do something for our younger uh, younger audience and our millennials to be like, look, hey, we stream on YouTube. Or yeah, we stream on Twitter or we stream on, you know, uh, Facebook Live. So here you can catch the service. And we finally realized that we had a lot of people who in our ministry that were, out. We have truck drivers in our ministry. We have people who are in school, in college in our ministry. We have people who go to other services, other churches uh, in our ministry. We have people who work at the hospital, but they still wanted to be able to watch our service. And so we figure out, let's let's do a way that we can come up with streaming. And that's when we called you in and see we got it done. Now, the other thing is, you might not know, Glenn is a minister. He's the elder of the church. Um, he preaches and all this other stuff. So you I mention a lot the battles that I have with church folk. We're talking about, oh, we can't, we need to remember tradition. We, we have to remember the old landmark for whatever. There's this preconceived notion of technology in the church. You know, I, I remember I was, I'm old enough to remember where it was frowned on to have drums in the church. I remember it was frowned on to have a guitar in the church. Um, anything other than an organ and a regular piano was heresy. Um, so I say all that to say, what was, what's your thought from a minister background on thoughts of, or the standpoint of people saying stuff like that? I mean, do you see in the scriptures? I mean, I know the Bible like you do, but do you know of anything in there that's, you would think if God was to come down right now, Jesus was to walk in this room right now and he sees live streaming, what do you think his thoughts were? Would he point to a scripture and saying, here's where it says this is not right? I mean, what's, no, what's I mean, your thoughts he said, he said, get the gospel to the whole world. You know, he told us, he gave us a command, go out, you know, go to the highways and hedges and compel them to come. Well, social media and using video streams is a way to get the word out to the masses. And I know there, um, you know, whatever can help you, whatever can hurt, help a ministry can hurt a ministry. Years ago, people said that TV was the one ID. But now, at during the 80s and 90s, preachers, preachers have been, trying to get on the word network and different things. So I think when we don't understand some things uh, is where we don't understand what the component of it or how to deal with it. Um, I think that's where, that's where teaching comes in, to teach the importance of streaming, the importance of uh, being able to share this gospel throughout the throughout the world. And you don't have to stream your whole service, and but it just takes some production to come into it. It is a, it becomes a production value because you want to put out 
a great production when you're streaming. You just don't want to set up anything and have everything, but you want it to be a very good product that you're giving to the world because it represents you, represents your ministry, and it also represents what you're standing for. Yeah, because I, I mean, and I completely agree because it's like in um, internet facts, and I, I I know I'm getting the the link wrong, but I'll I'll link it in the description, but. I remember doing research when I had to present at a conference where I was asked to come in and talk to the pastors of a church. And that's where the whole term of, um, and I actually steal this from um, J. Kyle Nicholson. I'm gonna have him on one of these one day. Um, he coined the term of uh, media ministry made easy. And I just added modern on front of that. So modern media ministry made easy because again, churches are normally the last ones to embrace technology. And by the time we do it, we, we have the snake oil man who's selling us anything and everything and not really realizing what they're selling us really isn't what we really need. And that's kind of like what this whole purpose is, is to try and educate. And I say that to say that there's 77,000 YouTube videos are watched every second. My whole mindset with this and from a church standpoint is if everybody's consuming that amount of content, they're going to be watching it anyway to have churches broadcast right. this information, we're now in that pool of videos that people are watching. And it now, you're, it, I, I was always taught, don't try and compel everybody to come to you. Go where people already are gathered and then set up shop there. Yeah, and you know, I think sometimes we, we do embrace church videos, but it's the funny ones. The one who stood up and te testified about something funny or the person in church who knocked the head or the, the, the new current one, the young boy who tells everybody he's tired of church. You know, that's what those are church videos that we want to embrace or, or we, we hear what a preacher's preaching and we want to criticize. Uh, you know, that's where you come in being careful about what you stream and that and that's that's what our standpoint is, you know, being careful what we put out to the world. Uh, you know, you're always not gonna have people like it and love it, but you wanna be careful what you put out. Um, because it it can have a backlash and it can have a negative effect on the body of Christ. Yeah, and I, I like coining that term as a the church's digital footprint. Because just like if a church is known to have um, a womanizer in the church, that thing will spread like wildfire through the neighborhood and people will have a stigma of the church. But now with the digital age, your digital footprint is nasty. You got people all over the planet are now looking down on your church. Yeah. And that's why we, I think we've got to be really careful and know that this is like you can give people powerful tools, but they need to be educated. Because if you don't, they can actually do more harm than good. Yeah, and when, with video ministry, and you know, when you show some of the clips from our stream, we do a lot of things. We do, you know, we use worship extreme. We go on and we use our, we use a lot of lower thirds. Uh, we do words with our songs. Uh, we do video announcements, uh, and so we're incorporating all this into our ministry. And then we get a lot of our young people, our young adults, our millennials involved those who are hip to social media with Twitter, Instagram, and we get them to work behind there. And you know, um, I'm one of the oldest ones in our, that runs our video ministry. We have young kids as young as eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12 that helps us in our ministry, our media ministry to uh, make sure it goes out to the world. So, and just like, I'm glad you said that. So a lot of churches have an issue where it's like you have to reach the, the unwritten age limit before you can actually do any ministry, but not realizing that the biggest tool that we have are kids who are in this era. Like, I mean, I'm in the same age to where like, I'm in the middle of my um, media ministry. But again, the youngest person that I have in our media ministry is maybe 16. Right. But most of the time he's already on the very things that we're doing. And the whole idea is to try and teach the old and the new, all this stuff that everybody's using can be used in a ministry standpoint. Mm -hmm. It can, you know, well, one thing I like to see, you know, parents parents complain about the kids sitting in church and not paying attention or focusing, or they're playing on their phones. Well, this way I figure if they're using their phone to tweet for us, or they're using their phone for Instagram, or they're using their phone for social media, they're paying attention. It, it, taking that um, learning ability, they have to listen, they have to be able to type it and write it, and so therefore, in my mind, they remember it. 
they remember what the pastor preached about because they're putting that scripture up there. They remember the scripture of the word because they're using it. They have to focus because we've got to move the camera and they got to listen to follow instructions uh, because they need to know what we're telling them. Oh, God, I need this angle here or I need you to produce this here. I need you to go get past the scripture and, and title so we can put it up. This is how you work through this. This is how we switch through cameras here. So we might be creating a career for that child within the ministry later on. And so we want them to be involved, and therefore you, you you always have something for them to do in the church to involve. Because I can't always do media ministry forever. Or oh, that Sunday that I have to minister, who's going to run the media ministry? So I try to clone myself and those others in the media ministry so they can be able to do the job. Okay. Do you think this could be done if you were the only one in the media ministry? Or is it one of those things where it's like, Oh, it might be somebody listening. Look, I understand. I really understand the importance of doing this. My church doesn't have the money, and it's just me. Yeah, I mean, if you can do this one person. Today, as we record this, I ran, I ran it by myself. Um, not because we didn't have people come to church. We just said our young people had different activities they needed to do. So I was in the media ministry. I ran it uh, with myself with the, the remote control arms that we had, with the computer beside me and social media, um, and we ran it. So one person, this the system we have, uh, with our three cameras that we have in our church, it can be manned by one person. Okay, so from that standpoint, now what if it's, it's the, not not a derogatory term, but you're the Backwoods Church that has maybe 10 members in there. Y'all, I, I don't know the finances, but just say that literally all you have access to is your smartphone. Is it worth trying to go down this path and embrace um, social media live streaming and stuff like that even if the budget's not there or the manpower yeah there. because you never know who you may get you may evangelize that's the way you're getting your word out about your ministry uh someone had to start somewhere you know a church is built by one person at a time so i have to reach one who can reach another one who can reach another one and through me using my iphone my ipad my samsung uh whatever phone i have uh, with that could help me do help me reach somebody else or share it with somebody that message may be able to get somebody saved and find out about that ministry or that church or it may not even that somebody may be blessed by the word and want to donate to your ministry and so that's why one, one of the things that we forget sometimes that it is important to be able to share the gospel but also again doing doing everything as we do in excellence so it could be a small church or a large church we know churches now that don't have that many members but they are doing uh, very well when it comes to streaming in multimedia so they're pretty much realizing that even if you're a small church, that you may physically only have a small count of members, that does not limit you having a humongous e-congregation. Now you have a large e-congregation. There are people who watch, um, I know for our stream, and I'm not gonna call names, but there are people who watch, and I know for a fact, they watch our ministry while they're in their church. <laughs> they're, they're, in their, they're literally in their church where they sit in that, and they watch because I monitor the screen. I know who's on. I know who the people are. I interact with them throughout. They're in. They're in their church. I know they're watching our stuff. Now again, we're not. I'm not. It's not that. endorsing that. <laughs> but I mean, no. I mean, I'll be honest. Is the fact of how many churches I help. Even when I'm at my church, I have to log into other clients that I help yeah. just to make sure that their stuff is straight. Yeah, and I, I view other people's churches to see, and I pick up ideas while they're in church. Okay, I got an idea from this ministry. We got this one from this ministry. So I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that whether your church is large and how you film it, no one knows. We look at some of these churches on TV, the word, and we think they are large ministries, but it's about, all about how you film it. And we learned that from you know filming school or different things you do is how you shoot it and how you angle it up that you never really know the size of a person's church until you actually get there. Yeah. And, I, and again, that's not, I, I take that, that it's not a form of deception. It's more of what's more important for you to sit back and see how many people are sitting in the seats or the message being delivered. And you can have a small ministry, but that's blessing your ministry. That everyone, that uh, that pastor is preaching to his congregation, his congregation is great. He has 100% tithe because of his congregation. He has, um, they're being blessed, they're impacting the community. So it's not about the number uh, that comes to your ministry. It's about how many people you can reach and what you can get done. So pretty much after everything that we we're talking about, I mean, forecasting, where do you see from a media standpoint from as a church as a whole or even just your church directly, where do you see the media ministry going? I see media ministry being the way, uh, way of the future, um, being with the fact that pastors now can have podcasts uh, pastors now can talk 
uh, on a regular basis. Pastors can have meetings uh, within media ministry. People can see their services and recap uh, weekly. Um, you got congregation members who travel or in college or they, who go wherever. They can go and log on to your website, log on to your church website, and, and see the message, see the word. Those who may be working in hospitals can work, see the word. If you have someone in a nursing home, they can share it with somebody else in the nursing home. So I see they multimedia uh, within ministries and churches. It's, the sky's the limit. It's how creative can we get in church uh, that we want to be creative. And if my dad always says something, it's not the message. The message never changes. The method of how we get the message to everyone is what changes. Exactly. So the message is still going to be great. You know, there was a day and age where everybody, all preachers were on the radio. That was the, me that was the method for that day and age. Then it was TV. That was the method for that day and age. Now it's social media streaming because everybody has an iPhone. Everybody, well, not an iPhone. Everybody has a, <laughs> everybody has a phone. I'm sorry, I'm part of the iPhone family. Everybody has some kind of sell a, a smartphone or a device where they can watch videos on it, whether it's an iPhone, whether it's a tablet. And it's not just, and I want people to know that your media ministry is just not your pastor preaching on Sunday morning. It could be your Bible study. It could be your youth church that you can go. It could be, I've seen ministries where they had puppet shows and it was just geared towards the young people. So you can take multimedia and do it different ways to enhance your congregation and to reach everyone in your church. Yeah, I mean, and I, I just think that's really important that you accent it that I, I, I was an old school, my dad was, a, I'm a preacher's kid, to just like Glenn is, to the pack of knowing that media ministry really originally consisted of coming in and turning on the mics. And that's where media ministry is, and unfortunately, a lot of people still think that that's really all it is. But the media ministry has so much power, and I ain't even trying to get scriptural or nothing, but I just remember, and correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't it that Moses was out there, and every time the children of Israel were fighting, he every time when he kept his arms up, they were winning, but his arms fell. But then you had to have Aaron and some other people come and lift his arms up so right. that the mission would be accomplished. Yeah. You know, and I think that's kind of like the whole thing. Like, again, some of, some people have pastors who are super innovative and they know the gamut of everything that needs to be done. But on average, most pastors don't know everything and they need people, ministries, underbearers to be able to take charge and as long as it's in line with his vision and what God has directed to go forward in whatever calling so like for example I'm sure your pastor doesn't know everything about the computer standpoint but I don't is he does he have any problem with the fact that hey hey I don't want you to spread our message that far I just want to stay inside nah, he, he decides and we talk to him we have meetings every week you know that's the same thing I think if you're in charge of the media ministry you should talk to your director or your pastor or you know whatever you call him in your ministry and, and and see what his vision is you want to stay in line with the vision of the pastor some pastors may not want their whole service stream some pastors may just want the word stream they some pastors may want an intro uh may some pastors may want an intro and an outro some pastors may want the choir beforehand uh they may want do a podcast or not so i think you when you streaming in your ministry it shouldn't be your vision but it should be the vet vision of the pastor or the that leadership team that you have we have a leadership team so we discuss things. We discuss, okay, this we want to do video minutes. We want to do video announcements. Pastor said once in a meeting, I want to do video announcements. Okay, I got you, Pastor. Here's the video announcements. Um, and so we want to do things with decency and order. So when you start in your media ministry or getting into video, talk to your pastor. What would he like? Don't just pop up on a Sunday morning with your camera and all this, and you just find and you hitting everything out there, and he does not know. That's where you get in trouble at. And, and you know you don't want to, some things he may not want out there. If your pastor say you know that may be the Sunday he wants to set some things in order for the house, and, and you're recording some things that are just particular to your house. Mm -hmm. So you got to know when and when to do that, and you also got to be smart. If your pastor get in one moment, but he's getting ready to preach, and he says he wants to set the house in order, uh, you might want to change the screen or cut the volume or do some things in order to maneuver that way. Or but that comes when you have a conversation with your leader and knowing what he wants in ministry and knowing what the church needs in ministry and i think that's where it will help you a ministry team and create a team create a team around you because if you die today or tomorrow you don't want your media ministry to stop yeah and and with that i completely agree with a team but just what we called out even if you don't have a team at the very beginning it starts with one person one person you have to set the vision as long as again that vision is in line with your leadership in the church now again i'm not saying 
as in line, meaning that everybody has to be on board, as in a complete understanding of how to do it. If you did that, no one would move forward with anything. Um, being able to understand and know how everything done. It's one of those things like my pastor. He doesn't know the gamut of what I know how to do from the computer standpoint, but like Glenn was saying, I communicate with him, tell him the vision of what, how my vision in the media ministry can complement the main vision of the church because it doesn't need to battle just like Glenn was saying. And I think the whole idea with all our media ministry stuff and the reason why I do this channel and things like that is laid before us right now are tools that used to be set aside for the elite, the super wealthy churches that most of the time cost hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to do. These now tools through technology have been made available to anybody who has a phone. I mean, literally, if you had to just start with this, you can do almost everything and reach and just touch the world and share the message. And I think that's the whole idea is to try and break down fear and preconceived notions that anybody, no matter where you're a small church, you're a storefront church all the way to a church that's been established and your building's been around for 200 years. Right. Either way, this, is, this wave that's coming affects everybody. And either you're going to be out there concerned about your house or you're going to be concerned about getting the message out. And I think that's kind of, um, at least that's what I feel in my heart about trying to share um, this type of stuff and the desire to push forward in a media ministry. Yeah, it's about getting the message out. And, and, you know, and that's where people come in and get help and get training to learn how to get the message out on and be effective. Uh, be effective, effective media ministry, and I think that's the key thing. Effective, because some of our first, our first videos, <laughs> boy, they were bad. Uh, <laughs> but we worked on it. We worked on it, uh, and then still, we still working on. It. Still finding some things now that we continue to work on. Uh, we're not the best at it. Um, we strive to be the best uh, at what we do. But this each Sunday, we can find something to do better. And maybe just because I'm kind of anal, if it's not lined up, or the lower third is not centered, or we need to fix some things, um, and just just try to get better at your media ministry. But it can take one person. And then that one person teaches another person and another person and media ministry will be booming. Man, well, I really appreciate this. And um, guys, you know, this is kind of a <laughs> off the cuff type of thing I was sitting back wanting to do. Um, if you like this type of stuff, you know, go ahead and leave some comments down below. I'm sure Glenn and me will respond to um, any of the comments there. Um, if you like this type of content and you want to see more like this, what will help is by hitting that like button, also consider subscribing and share this so that we can help get this information out because we're trying to help grow any church, whether it be, and just help educate. So again, this is AJ, the CEO. This is Glenn. Hey, drop drop your um your channel so people know about you as well. Uh, you, hit me, uh, you hit me on Twitter. I'm on Twitter a lot, at gfather725. Uh, hit me up on Twitter. All righty. So we'll be back again. Um, again, this is AJ, the CEO. Thanks for watching. Later.